you will be back. If in your mind you are gone, I declare today the Holy Ghost will bring you back in Jesus' name. And if physically you are gone, you only came to visit. You have tested out there. You have seen what is going on. I pray the power of God will bring you back into the fold in Jesus' name. The enemy allows some things to happen so that those that are not free, that are not serious, can be, can, 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 can be cut off. You will not be cut off in Jesus' name. At all that times, the problem that makes some people to have fear and then quit the faith is their Unmet desire, desires are made. Desires are made. And at other times, at other times, you see some people, it is the sustained, unrelenting battle they are facing. They forgot that the Christian life is a battle. Ephesians chapter 6, looking at it from verse 10. The Bible tells us, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of, of God that ye may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we wrestle not against, help me here, flesh and blood, but against one, principalities, two, powers, three, rulers of darkness of this world, and four, Spiritual wickedness where in high places they forget that we are in a battle. That from the very day you gave your life to Christ, your God enlisted in that battle. And they forgot that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Every stronghold of the enemy in your life are crumbling in Jesus' name. Amen. First Samuel chapter 21. First Samuel chapter 21. I'm looking at it from verse 9. First Samuel 21. Verse 9. There in verse 9, the Bible says, And the priest said, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom thou slewest in the valley of Elah. Behold, it is here, wrapped in a cloth. Behind the effort, if thou wilt take that, take it, for there is no other save that here. And David said, There is none like that. Give it unto me. Give it unto me. And David arose and fled that day. For what's the next word? The fear of Saul. The fear of Saul. Fear made people to run away. And went into Achish, the king of God. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? The king of the land? The king of the land? Pay attention here. Put your hand there. He ran away from his place of appointment. He ran away from his place of blessing. And even though he has not been ordained. He has been anointed, but not yet ordained. Even the enemies can't know he's an ordained king already. Listen to this. The hand of God is upon you. The power of God is upon you. Stand your ground and don't run in Jesus' name. They did not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul has slain his thousands, and David is ten thousand. And David laid up this was where? In his heart, and was so afraid of Achish, the king of God. Now, what drove him away from Israel? Fear. Now, what is happening before Achish, where he ran into? Fear within, fear without. Fear paralyzes. You will not be paralyzed. Verse 13, and he changed, what's the next word? His behavior. His behavior. Is that not the problem with many of us? Because of fear, we can't stand our ground. We can declare that we are Christian. We change our conduct, our behavior, our attitude in compromise. He changed his behavior before them and feigned himself mad in their hands and scribbled on the doors of the gate and let his spiritual fall down upon 
his beard. That is what fear does. God will deliver you from fear in Jesus' name. First Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19. I look at it from verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and whither how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me. And much also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servants there. Who are we talking about here? Elijah. Verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might, you will not die. You will not die. Lift up your right hand right now and say in the name of Jesus, I shall not die, but leave to declare the great work of the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will preserve you. You know, thank you. Put on your hands. Elijah quit the ministry before his time. You will not quit before your time in Jesus' name. Christian calling and ministerial calling. Go back with unlimited power from above and supported by the brethren and the local church. Experiences have told us that power from above is not sufficient for some people. And because of fear, they run from their place of refuge, they run from their place of protection, and they run to the camp of the enemy. They will not run to the camp of the enemy in Jesus' name. We are told in the book of uh, Timothy, First Timothy, I look at chapter 1, verse 7. There the Bible says that... Um, First Timothy chapter 1, First Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It says, desiring to be teachers of the law, um, understanding neither what they say or where they affirm. I think I'm getting the wrong thing. I'm trying to get the place where the Bible says that God has not given unto us the spirit of fear. Amen. Amen. Second Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. Thank you. For God has not given us the spirit of fear. Somebody say amen. amen. But of power and of love and of a sound mind. That is your portion. That is my portion in Jesus' name. God is not the author of fear. Anytime you are afraid of making it, that is the enemy coming your way. Get rid of the enemy and you will make it in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 14, verse 10. Exodus chapter 14. We look at the 10th verse there. It says, And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lift up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. Now, two things happen here. When they saw the enemy, they were afraid. But something good happened. What did they do? They cried unto the Lord. Don't run away from the presence of the Lord. Remain in the Lord. No matter how you are feeling, call upon the Lord. Sometimes it is human. But never allow fear to overwhelm you, to overtake you. Peter was in the boat. He saw Jesus walking on the water. And then he said, Jesus, if that be you, bid me to come. He had the courage at that time. And then Peter, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of his faith. With that faith, he stepped out. And you know Peter was a fisherman. Peter knew much more than that, that the water is not a solid rock. You step into it, you drown. 
But then he kept looking unto Jesus. Jesus, is that you looking unto Jesus? And then I could imagine Peter bringing out the first leg out of the boat and then trying to put it in the water. And then as he touches the water, it was solid under him. Is it real? Is it real? Is it real? On Christ a solid rock I stand. All other ground are sinking sand. But pay attention. After Peter brought the second leg out, he was standing, he was walking. Is it real? And then Peter suddenly realized, I am on top of the water. Supposing it is just an eyes that formed. And everything give way. What becomes of me? The moment Peter began to think of that, in fear, what happened to Peter? He began to sink. You will not sink in Jesus' name. But then Peter did something good. He did something good. He did not call unto the other apostles because he knew they cannot help. Sometimes you are going to someone that cannot help you. What did he do? He cried unto the Lord and the Lord saved him. He will save you. You know, at another time, at another time, at another time, I'm just saying that just paradventure, something happened and fear came, came in, not because of sin, but because of the wind of life, because of the storm of life that wants to make you give up your faith. You call on God, you cry unto God. Christ was in the boat with the disciples. And then in Mark chapter 4, and then as they were traveling, then the wind, the storm, Understand, in this life, the wind will blow. The storm will rain, but they will not overtake you. And then Jesus was resting. And as the, the wind was blowing and the storm raging, it was beating into the bowl. And water was coming in. Now the people there understand they were fishermen. They did not jump out of the boat. They remained there. What did they do? They cried to the Lord. Master, master, carest thou not that we perish? Many a times you have issue. You are running to unbelievers. Many a times you have a problem. You are running back to your family. Call upon the Lord. He will make a way for you. And then Jesus rose up. He rebuked the wind. He rebuked the storm. And everything became calm. In your life, peace be still. In your family, peace be still. On your job, peace be still. That problem in your body, I speak right now. Peace be still in Jesus' name. None of all those will take you away from the Lord. None of all those will shift your faith and focus away from the King of Glory in Jesus' name. All these things causes a problem. You know, sometimes it's because we overestimate the enemy. That's the reason for fear. They will do this, they will do that. You forgot that you are a man and a woman of authority. That the Bible says that you shall declare a thing, decree a thing, and it shall be established unto you. No matter how you want things to be in life, you are a king. Decree it and it will come to pass. The problem is we overestimate the power of the enemy and we under, underestimate ourselves. And then we have forgotten that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God. Through God. You know, at other times, some people is self-confidence. Self-confidence. Tell me somebody in the Bible that self-confidence almost destroyed him. Peter. Peter. Instead of self Confidence, put your confidence in the Lord. I said, put it in the Lord, and it will keep you to the end in Jesus' name. At other times, it is the statistics of people that have fallen. When you look at this one, that has happened, that one, that has happened, and then you look at some people you met in the church, you met in the faith, and the way they are living their life, um, even though they talk about, they preach about it, but they are not living the life. And then your service says, oh, I don't think this thing is real. For as long as you're in this tabernacle, you can't live above sin. It's a lie. You can live above sin. Tell somebody, you can live above sin. I said, tell somebody, you can live above sin. And say to somebody, you are now saying to somebody, I will live above sin. 
If you will not, I will. By the grace of God, I will. With the help of God, I will. By the power of God, I will. I will make it to the end in Jesus' name. I have a good news for you. I said I have a good news for you. I have some brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers that ran this race and they made it to the end. And every time I go through, you think overseer doesn't go through challenge? You think pastor doesn't go through challenge? You think superintendent doesn't go through challenge? Everybody does. Everybody does. But whenever it happens, those of us that are standing, this is what we do. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from God, the maker of heaven. And, earth. and then we look at people like Peter. Peter made it. I will make it. Paul the apostle made it. I will make it. Moses that initially with because of fear ran away from Egypt to, 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 to the wilderness. Moses eventually made it. Look at Elijah we read about a few minutes ago that ran away from a woman. <laughs> Who is pursuing you? A woman? A Jezebel? Woe to that Jezebel. Don't run from that Jezebel. Because God has given you power and authority over that Jezebel. Decree it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Who is that individual? And Ahab wanting to take your life that he took the life of Naboth? No. If God be for us. No. I said if God be for us. Nobody can be against you. You will not die. You will not die. You will not die. Moses was told by God, go back to Pharaoh. Go back to Pharaoh. And he went back to Pharaoh. And he finished his ministry. He will finish your ministry. Joshua chapter 5 verse 13 causes of fearlessness. Joshua chapter 5 we're looking at the 13th verse there. There the Bible says verse 13 and it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho that he lifted up his eyes and looked and behold there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for our adversary? Hmm. Verse 14. And he said, Nay. Nay. But as the captain of the host of the Lord, I am come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What said thou, uh, my Lord, unto his servant? And the captain of the Lord's host said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoe from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is what? Is holy. And Joshua did so. Pay attention here. Look up here. Joshua thought he was alone leading Israel. Joshua did not know or realize 